Okay, so welcome to this new Malt Academy. Uh, before starting uh, the technical uh, subject, I am going to present myself. I'm Camille Blanc. I work at Malt. Uh, I work in the community team who is in charge of the freelancers uh, at Malt, and I'm especially in charge of uh, backend developers with uh, Margot, who is also an intern in my uh, team. Uh, today, uh, it's Maxime who is going to do the presentation, but before that, just uh, like waiting for everybody to, to log in. Um, what's, uh, I'm going to tell you more about Malt and Malt Academies. Uh, so most of you may already know about it, but Malt is a platform, uh, an online platform that uh, connects uh, freelancers and uh, clients. So when I say clients, it's really any kind of client from very big companies to uh, small uh, startups. Um, and we are a French company, but we also exist in Germany and Spain, and maybe more soon. Uh, and we have launched the Malt Academy in uh, the last uh, lockdown in France, so last spring. It's actually the birthday of the Malt Academy. They have one year now, uh, in order to help uh, freelancers to connect between them uh, and to uh, train themselves on very specific subjects. So the whole point of Malt Academy is really to learn things uh, for free. Uh, today, this Malt Academy uh, will be in English, but as you can hear, I guess, uh, you, you can guess there's a lot of Malt Academy in French too, in Spanish and in German also available. Uh, all the replays are on our website. And uh, also after this uh, webinar, you will have an email asking you for your feedbacks. Please do not hesitate to tell what you thought about it and to give us any uh, ideas for future Malt Academies because the point is to help you and to give you uh, relevant content. Uh, so please do not hesitate. Uh, okay, I think I said everything. I will be back anyways at the end of the Malt Academy in case you have any questions about Malt or other Malt Academies. And now I will let uh, you, uh, Maxime, present yourself and uh, do your, uh, your presentation. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. So hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm going to start to share my screen right away. Ready to see my presentation. All right, it should be good. So hi everyone. Uh, so in this presentation, I'm going to uh, show you how you can uh, do web scrapping using Strapi. And the first question you might have is, what is Strapi actually? So my name is Maxim. I'm working at Strapi, uh, headless CMS, uh, and I'm working at this company as a growth hacker uh, for almost uh, two years now. So the first thing we are going to see is what is Strapi exactly. So Strapi is a flexible open source and self-hosted headless CMS, which gives uh, the freedom uh, for developers to choose their favorite tools and frameworks, uh, while also allowing editors to easily manage and distribute their contents. You will understand in the next slide how and why uh, it gives um, to developers th uh, this freedom by being headless CMS. But other than that, um, Strapi is open source, which means that uh, you can absolutely see um, the source code of the application and you can also contribute to it. Um, the location is like GitHub slash Strapi slash Strapi. It is self-hosted, which means that you host Strapi on the servers you want. It can be AWS, DigitalOcean, Google, Plat Google Cloud Platform, or even your own servers uh, like a Raspberry Pi. Um, it is entirely customizable. It has a plugin system, you, so you can basically use uh, you can use uh, sorry uh, systems plugins from the community. It is one hundred percent JavaScript, so it is made using Node.js and React. And last but not least, uh, it is backed and supported by a huge and wonderful community. So, what is headless CMS exactly? So today there is three types of CMS that exist today. And the first one is based on what we call a monolithic architecture, which means that the backend is linked to the front end. So the content that we'll create in the back in the back end will be automatically linked um, to a front end. Um, then we have another architecture which not link uh, the back end to the front end. However, this is a proactive architecture, which means that the back end uh, prepare the content for presentation and pushes it to a delivery environment. Um, so these architecture are not very flexible because you you might not be able to really choose what front end you want to use with your CMS. And this is where the headless architecture comes in. In fact, this is a reactive approach, which means that you basically create the content and then this content just sits and waits for something to uh, fetch, fetch it through an API. So basically, being headless is being able to use several heads. 
Because let's say that you want to distribute your content um, on a smartphone. Let's say that you have a smartphone, a website, and a smartwatch. The thing with um, Strapi uh, would be like to create a content, uh, your content, your data in the admin panel. And then you will be able to, for example, on smartphone to have, uh, I don't know, Ionic or Swift application fetching this uh, data using the API. Then you will have a website using Vue.js, for example, fetching the data again, thanks to the API and a smartwatch application in uh, Java, for example, fetching again this data using API. So you gather all the, app, all the data in one place and you can fetch it uh, through different platforms. Uh, yeah, and uh, you can access it through the API, of course. Uh, not only the front end, uh, you can, of course, uh, add uh, some plugins uh, and connect many databases as you want in Headless CMS. Uh, you can also implement uh, some hosting providers, some search, some e-commerce plugins, and some payments. So there is a real ecosystem where you can basically connect every services that are existing to your Headless CMS. And you have two options that uh, when requesting uh, the, um, the content of your headless CMS, you can use a REST API or even GraphQL. All right, enough talking. Uh, I think you might understand now what Strapi is. So in this session, what we're going to do is like to create a Strapi project and make a um, web scrapping application uh, on that. So basically, we are going to create some Node.js uh, scrapper to fetch some information from another website and to uh, implement it in our Strapi uh, application. All right, so yeah, let me switch that, okay. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do, uh, so as I said, Strapi is self-hosted, which means that uh, you need to run it on your computer. And to do that, you use either Yarn or uh, NPM or NPX. Uh, I already created the project because it takes a little bit of time and uh, to gain some time for the presentation, I already did that. But to create a project, you just type yarn create, then strap your app like this, and then you choose the name of your project. So you can call it i dash project. And then you will be asked uh, which database you want to use, et cetera, et cetera. If you want to really uh, try strap as, as, as fast as possible using SQLite database, you can enter the quick start option and it will uh, create a structure project based on SQLite. So that's it. And if you want to use NPX, you can just do NPX and add a dash like this. Okay, so I already did that and my project is here, the web scrapping one. So I already opened it in, inside my uh, editor. So this is the, 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 the base of uh, Strapi. So all the folders and uh, uh, files that it generated. So what I'm going to do is that this webinar is um, retroscription, I don't know if I can say that, of an article I did. So the web scrapping with Strapi is an article. I will send it to you at the end of uh, the, um, uh, the presentation if you need to really uh, take more time to uh, go uh, deeper into the article or to do that. But basically, I'm going to just follow the article um, to uh, replicate this application. So I created my application. What I want to do now is um, to execute it and then run my uh, application. So I first install all the dependencies and it's already done. So we'll just need to yarn develop and it will launch uh, my Strapi project, hopefully in the window here. I will stop the presentation. Oh, it will be accessible here. So the default port of Strapi is um, 1337 slash uh, 1237, sorry. And it's accessible to the slash admin and it's building, sorry. So we need to wait just a little bit so I can see if there is any questions uh, in the chat. Nope. Hi, everyone. All right, so we just need to, what's happening here is that the admin, uh, so the interface of Strapi where you will be able to create your content is building. Uh, so we just need to wait. Uh, so it is successfully so far good, okay. <laughs> Let me know if you have any question, guys. Uh, okay, so first thing we have to do is to create our administrator, okay? So I'm going to create my administrator using email, my password, all right, good. And I will just change it to English so you guys clearly 
understand what's going on. All right, so we are landing on the uh, strap interface, and I see a question. Is it possible to improve the quality or not? Um, I'm, I'm not sure if we can improve the quality. Uh, maybe in the queue. Uh, is it possible for you uh, to see if we can improve the quality? Is it, is it bad, really? Uh, can you see the screen? Uh, yes, we can. It's not. Uh, it's a bit small, so maybe people who think it's not good enough oh, okay. to, uh, make okay, it okay. bigger. But honestly, on my side, it's fine. It could be better, but it's it's okay, honestly, Maxime. Oh, increased text. Oh, sorry. Okay, okay. okay. That's, uh, thank you. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, okay, maybe that's better, and I will do the same, of course, in the in the terminal and in the, the editor. Uh, okay, good. Okay, so we landed on the interface of Strapi. So the first thing we want to do here is to create um, our content types. So uh, we already have one created, it's user, but we don't really need it for this example. So I'm going to create my first content type. But first, I need to introduce you what we are going to scrap. So there's a uh, website. So this is a, a really simple um, website to scrap uh, just for the example. But of course, um, you can scrap any website you want. Uh, we are going to use Puppeteer for the people who know which uh, service it is. Uh, I'm not sure to correctly write it. This, yeah. So Puppeteer is a um, is a headless Chrome, which allows you to basically control an navigator and do the same action uh, a human can do uh, with a with a browser. So we are going to use that, and you can basically scrap any website. But for this one, we are going to scrap all the site generators that are listed on Jamstack.org. So all these ones. All right. And to do that, of course, we need to create a, a model, so a structure of data that will contain all this information. So, for for example, for each for each site generators, we are going to scrap the name, the number of stars, forks, issues, the description, the language, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, we are going to create the architecture for that. So, we are going to create first um, a scrapper model. So, we are going to be able to uh, manage our scrapper and then the site generator model. So we create a first collection type, which is Scrapper, all right? And inside of it, we want to have the name of the Scrapper. So the name will be like a Scrapper for this website. It will be jamstack.com just after, but it's a name. We want to have a description. Then we want to have a slug. So in the code, when I will be creating the Scrapper, I want to easily fetch my Scrapper to tell it, OK, I want my scrapper to do that, to do that. Uh, and to that, I will use not the ID, because the ID means nothing. It's just a one or two. And I want to really be sure of which scrapper I'm, I'm fetching. And I will use a slug. So I will call it a slug. And it will be automatically generated if you use the name. So if you call your scrapper jamstack.org, the slug will be jamstack-org. So just for uh, us to be, uh, for uh, the application to be easier to, to fetch the scrapper. Then we want to be able to enable or disable our scrapper. So we are just creating a Boolean uh, field, and we call it enabled. And by default, we set it to false. We had another field. And uh, then it is op totally optional, but we want to have a JSON a field, uh, which will contain um, errors if, there, is, uh, if there, uh, there are any errors during the execution of the scrapper. Another JSON containing a report to tell us how many uh, new scrappers, uh, new um, uh, site generators has been scrapped during the execution. Then we want to have um, another text, which is the frequency. So I don't know, guys, if you are uh, people, sorry, if you are um, familiar with a uh, cron expression. I'm just going to cron guru. So basically, a cron is a task that can be run like uh, periodically, um, and the expression is like this. So, for example, this expression means that uh, you want to execute your cron at every day at four uh, five. If you replace the four and the five with uh, some stars, it will say uh, it will run uh, your program at every minute. All right. And what we want to do is to uh, be able to tell our scrapper, okay, I want my scrapper to run at uh, I don't know every five minutes. And to do that, we need to um, create a frequency field that will contain this kind of expression, All right? So I had it. And finally, an, uh, a last field that will contain 
um, the next the next execution date that our scrapper will run. You will understand more uh, after that. Uh, don't worry if you don't really understand the purpose of this field. I will explain in details just after. All right, and then you close and you will have basically your content type, a collection type, which is scrapper containing all the fields. So you can click save. So the, the, the server is, is uh, starting again. And you can see here, you have a new collection type, which is scrapper. You can manually add then your new scrappers by uh, filling a name, etc., etc. But we are going to do that later. And I'm just checking if we have some questions. Um, Uh, so I'm just checking the the, the, the chats first. We just, uh, yes, I can put a source code on GitHub. Uh, there is no GitHub repository yet, but I will create it just after. Uh, I will also send you the the article so you can uh, go deeper inside the article. Don't worry, uh, don't worry on that. Um, what is dynamic zone in types? Uh, it is really complex. I'm not sure this is uh, relevant for this uh, for this webinar, uh, Taki. Uh, I will answer to your question um, uh, when the webinar will be over uh, in the chats. Um, yeah, I will answer that uh, your your question uh, after the webinar on chats. Okay, so we created uh, the content of a scrapper. Uh, next thing we want to do is to create uh, the collection type of our uh, site generators because all the information we are going to get needs to be filled uh, in Strapi. So we are going to create a collection type for that. So we create a new collection type and we will call it site generator. We do the same thing basically, but it will have like some other fields uh, in it. So we said that we want the name, the stars, etc. So first thing is the name. Next thing is the description. After that, we have the language of the site generator. We have uh, the templates. We want to fetch also the license. Then we have a number. So we will have the stars, how many stars uh, the site generator has on, on GitHub. Uh, and we want to, you have multiple formats, uh, but I will select just here, Integer, the simple one. Then we will have works, simple issues. Then we will have also a link. We will scrap the link to deploy to Netlify. So basically, if you want to quickly deploy Next.js on Netlify, just click on the link and Netlify um, propose you to, to, um, to deploy it. So we want to have a text, and it will be deployed uh, to Netlify link. Short text. You can have a long text here, but uh, it's not um, it's not relevant for what we want. We don't really have like long text, and you can also have advanced settings. So if you want, for example, your uh, field to be unique to be required, we don't really need that here. So I leave it blank. Uh, but um, uh, this is totally possible if you want to make a unique field, etc. The last thing we want to do is to add a relation. Uh, what can be cool is to tell that uh, this uh, data that has been scrapped belongs to a scrapper. Uh, we can do that. So there is a site generator. And here we need to select um, which con collection type we want to, to, uh, to link. So this is the scrapper one. And you have many relations. So for example, site generator as one scrapper, etc. The one we want here that makes sense is scrapper as many site generators. So for every uh, scrappers, we will be able to see in the little window, you will see that at, uh, at the end, how many uh, uh, site generators has been scrapped for this scrapper. And you can press on finish. All right. You can press, you can press save, sorry. And that's it. OK, perfect. So now everything is ready. You can create now our scrapper. All right. So just one thing that is bothering me is that the frequency the next execution at is at the bottom of my view, and I want it to be on the top. You can do that by configuring the view. So I will just uh, place the error at the end and the report too, and that should be good. You can press save. You confirmed. All right, and now we can create our first wrapper. So all the side generators that have been that will be scrapped will uh, appear here. So the name, uh, we are going to call it Jamstack. 
dot org because this is a uh, scrapper for this website. Uh, the description, little description, you can see that the slug has been automatically generated thanks to the name because it is linked to the name as we did uh, during the, the creation. We don't enable it uh, for now. And then we have the frequency. Um, the frequency we can uh, place uh, only stars, so which means every minute. So it will run every, every minute. Uh, just for testing, because we will implement the code um, steps after steps, um, we are just going to tell it every minute. That's perfect. OK, and I think that now we can save. And we will dive now in the code. So we did everything uh, in Strapi, like uh, in the interface. What we just did is like creating the, the structure of the scrapper. So basically all the fields that it will contain, so a name, description, etc. The same for site generators, which is here. And we just created a scrapper that is just um, not ready yet <laughs> to scrap some informations, but it will be soon. All right, so now what we are going to do is, you remember, as I said during the presentation, Strap is fully customizable. Uh, that was not a lie. Uh, we are going to customize it to basically uh, be a web, web scrapping application. So I'm in the project, uh, Strapi project. The first thing I'm going to do is to be able to override the find one function of uh, Strapi. Um, how to explain that? Uh, by default, um, I'm going to just dive into the side generator. So I'm going to override uh, the controller of uh, the side generator. OK, here we can see that. Uh, it sent us to a documentation. So we are going to see uh, what's going on in this documentation. So this is how you can customize the controller. And you have some uh, some options you, you can customize uh, for a collection type. So you have the find uh, function, uh, which we, uh, will fetch all the collection, all the data for your collection type. You have the find one for fetching just one. So if you are familiar with a uh, CRUD application, so create, read, update, um, and destroy. Uh, these are basically the routes of an API, uh, of a REST API. What we're going to do is by default here, the find one use an ID. And this is not something we want because we created a slug uh, for um, the jamstack.org. And in the application, we don't want to fetch the scrapper using an ID because it doesn't make any sense. We want to use the slug. So we are going to just uh, override this controller and not use the ID, but the slug. So we can just remove that and here instead of using the id as we can see uh, in the documentation we are just using a slug simple as that the next thing we, we need to do is in the config you go in routes.js so this is the routes of your uh, of your uh, collection type uh, you can see that you just need to update the find one so this is the one and instead of having an id you change it by a slug OK, perfect. So now we can just uh, fetch. Uh, we are able to fetch our scrapper using a slug. OK, now let's get into the scrapper. So I'm going to create a script slash scrappers folders. So scrappers folder inside script folders. And I'm going to create my gem stack that's just fine. So this is the main uh, file that will contain the logic of, um, of uh, our scrapper. OK, so I'm going to just add um, this. So as I said, it will not be live coding, like uh, writing everything, because it will take more time. Uh, uh, and we are kind of limited by, by the time. But I will explain everything that I will write. Don't worry about it. So here, this is the main uh, function of the, 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 the file. I'm defining the slug, which is the slug of the scrapper we created, right? Uh, and I'm just using a query uh, to find this scrapper using the slug. So you see, I'm not using an ID, which means nothing. Here, I'm uh, when I read the code, I can see that I'm fetching the jamstack.org scrapper. So I have the scrapper perfect. So here, I'm just printing the content of it. And uh, just a condition at the end, if the scrapper is null or not enabled or doesn't have a frequency, I just stop the program because it will break the code uh, if we don't do that. So it's just a condition to quit the program if uh, there is a problem with that. So to test the code, um, I'm not going to f directly uh, use the cron because every time we want to try the code, we will need to wait for the cron to execute our program. We are going to use um, a file in Strapi that is executed every time you save or you update a file in, uh, in Strapi. 
which is the bootstrap. So basically, it's a file that is executed every time you run your uh, server. So we are going to use this to basically require the JAP stack uh, JS file, so this file. And uh, every time, so we reload, we will uh, be reloading a file. It will just execute what is inside this file. Okay. So if I go in my terminal, uh, so it has restarted the server. Uh, you can see that the console log of this scrapper has been executed. So you can see that all the information, all the information for the scrapper has been printed out uh, in the terminal. And you can see that no site generators has been uh, created yet, of course. All right. Is it a little break to questions time? Uh, <laughs> uh, is it possible to do that with the Strapi free version? Of course, Fabien. Uh, as you can see, you have the information of your Strapi project uh, here. And the community is the free version. So I'm actually doing that with the free version. Of course, it is possible. Uh, and there is no questions. OK, perfect. Let's go ahead then. Um, all right. So the next thing we want to do. Uh, okay. The th uh, next thing we want to do is to create a utils folders, and we are going to create some functions uh, that can be reusable for other scrappers. So this architecture I'm doing here, I uh, to be totally transparent, I did it uh, for uh, for someone, and and I'm using different scrappers. So instead of just having a Jamstack, I had uh, four four scrappers, I think, yeah. And so I will create some functions that will be in this file to reuse them into uh, our our multiple scrappers. So here. Here, I'm just creating one scrapper, so uh, it's, it's, it's fine. It doesn't make sense, but if you want to create more, it's a, it's a good practice. OK, so not here. Utils. Uh, yeah. And I'm going to create a utils.js file. And inside of it, just for now, I will write nothing. Before going further, we'll need two packages for this uh, file. And we are going to shut down the server. We are going to add these packages. So the packages we are going to use is cron parser and shack. So the first one, cron parser, is a, a package that will allow us to pass the expression of a cron. So what I showed you uh, here. So to convert this into a timestamp. So to convert this into that, basically. <laughs> Uh, and the one after is shark is just for uh, coloring uh, the output in the terminal. It's not really necessary. It's optional. Um, but it's always nice to have some colors in the terminal, I think. <laughs> so I'm adding it. So you need to stop your server. Um, you add your packages, and then you can uh, start your servers again. So beyond the wall. It will start again. And it will again execute the code because we we leave the, 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 the bootstrap uh, function here. All right, so in the U utils uh, uh, file, we are going to add this block code, this one. So this is a function. So we are first uh, requiring cron parser. And this is a function that will check is if a scrapper um, can run. So basically, this is not the case yet. But what the logic of our scrapper will be like this. Every minute, uh, we want to check if uh, it is the time to run the scrapper. So if you set the frequency of your scrapper here uh, to uh, every minute, basically, uh, every minute in the cron, because in Strapi you have a cron system that we will see later, not now because for testing this is not a good practice. But every minute we are going to check to parse this expression. So we are going to see, OK, this is in the next minute. So for example, if we see the time here, uh, so 31, the next minute will be 32. It will check if this is the time to run the scrapper. So basically, if the time converted, uh, the frequency converted to a timestamp is uh, inferior to the actual time. If this is the case, then it will return true. And if not, it will return false. What this function will do is to fill the next execution at. Now you can see that you don't have a next execution, execution at uh, filled uh, with a value. It means that um, if, for example, I say that I want to run my uh, uh, my scrapper at every five minutes, during the next minute, it, it will check. So it will pass the frequency. And it will check, is it the time to run the, the scrapper? No, it is not the time, because it needs to be run. It needs to be run in five minutes. So OK, I set the next execution at, so hard to say, <laughs> in five minutes. So it will contain a timestamp in five minutes after. 
And then the minute after, it will check. It is the time. No, it's in four minutes. It's in three minutes. It's in two minutes. And then after, it will be uh, inferior to the actual next execution ads, and it will learn the scrapper. So at this time, it will be true, and you will be able to scrap. I might be uh, confusing. Don't hesitate if you have any question. You will understand uh, at the end uh, the logic. Don't worry, guys. People, sorry. <laughs> uh, OK. Next function. Uh, so first of all, I'm requiring chop just for having like a color uh, in a, in the terminal. Next function is to get all side, uh, side generators. So I'm just doing a strapy query uh, to get all the data for side generators. Uh, I'm limiting the the result at one thousand because I know that on the website there is no more than that, only three five uh, three hundreds. Um, and then I just want to retrieve the name of it. So basically, this array will only contain the name of all the static site generators that already that has been scrapped already. So for example, it will contain Next.js, Hugo, etc. For now, it will contain nothing because there is no uh, site generators in database, and it will just print you a message uh, of how many site generators you do have in um, in your database. Of course, then you need to export the function. OK, next one we want to do is optional. Uh, it's just a function that will allow us to save the date in our report and error. One thing that is totally optional but uh, can be cool is that at every execution of the scrapper, it's cool to see if we had any errors uh, that we, uh, they will be avail available in this JSON and any report that will be available in this JSON too. So it's just for uh, getting the time for the report. So it's not very uh, uh, necessary, but it's cool to have. Also, we export it. And finally, manage the sorry the last function, uh, also um, optional. So it just uh, prepared the, the report. So it just create an object with the how many new site generators you scrapped and the date next to it. So basically, it will just create the report. So at every execution, you will see how many site generators you scrapped, new one you scrapped, and uh, at which time. Okay, perfect. So I think it's good for the utils files. File, sorry. Now what we can do is to go back to the chap stack. But before that, we need to have to add sorry two packages. So we shut down the server, and uh, we had Puppeteer and Cherry. So as I said, Puppeteer will allow us to uh, fetch uh, to control a navigator, and um, Cheerio uh, is a um, uh, HTML uh, parser, so uh, we will be able, thanks to that, uh, to uh, really parse the HTML of the content uh, uh, on, on Puppeteer. So basically, it will allow us to fetch uh, all the information, so the title, uh, using HTML. All right, so we can add this, and it will take some time, so maybe it's question time. All right. <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, uh, there will be a recording of this talk. Yeah, sorry, you didn't, you already answered. Uh, <laughs> okay, no more questions. All right, perfect. Okay, it was quicker than expected. We launched the server back, perfect. So now we are going to modify uh, the main uh, Jamstack JS file. So this is where all the magic will happen. So, okay. Don't worry, I will explain. <laughs> so I'm requiring chalk again, just for some uh, colors. <laughs> then puppeteer, of course. Here, I'm uh, requiring all the functions I created. Uh, so I can just place the file here. I'm removing that. OK. So I'm just importing all the functions that I, I exported here. Nothing uh, really uh, complicated here. I'm creating a report object that will contain uh, the report, uh, errors uh, array that will contain all the errors. And a new SG uh, variable that which that will be equal to two uh, to zero. Sorry, at the uh, at the beginning. And every time we will increment, uh, we will scrap a, a site generator. We will increment it just for the report to know how many new S, uh, SG we, we got. This is the main function. So this is where all the magic will happen. This is where we are going to use Puppeteer and Cherry to scrap uh, the HTML. But we are going to do that just after. And uh, we change. A little bit uh, the main function. So this is the same. We are fetching the scrapper. If uh, the scrapper is null, not enabled, or doesn't have a frequency, we just print a little message saying that uh, this is a problem because uh, it may not exist, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and we stop the program. 
what we added here uh, is um, a condition if our scrapper can actually run using the functions we created uh, on utils.js. So it will call the scrapper can run function. If it can run, uh, basically you can also remove that because we already checked that here. Uh, so if it can run, then we fetch all the site generators we already have in database, and then we just scrap. So we execute this function that for now just uh, console log a scrap function. And at the end, uh, we just, uh, no, this is not necessary uh, for now. We will, you will see that uh, later. Okay. Uh, so yeah, if you reload the, the, your file, um, again, like I said, every time we reload the file, uh, the, the function will be executed. So this main function will be executed. We will have, of course, the error because we didn't enable our script. It's totally perfect. So we, it means that this condition works. Okay. So the next thing, next thing, sorry, is we are going to comment this, this, all right, just this, okay. And to see if uh, the functions are working well. So yes, uh, we can see that we have zero site generators in database and uh, the scrap function has been executed. I just removed the conditions to, to let the program uh, execute these functions. All right. So now we are going to uh, scrap. So I'm going to implement all the scrap logic. So I'm going to copy past all the code. Don't worry again, I will explain, uh, but it will take more, uh, more, uh, too much time, sorry, to, to, to do it from scratch. So I'm doing the same thing, uh, except this. So uh, I'm importing, I'm requiring all the function from UTs. Okay, perfect. And here uh, I'm requiring some other functions from another file that doesn't exist uh, yet. We are going to create just after. But basically, this is just a function that will create the site generators inside Strapi and update the scrapper, uh, the current scrapper, uh, adding the report and the error, JSON. Not worry, we will create them just after. So we have the variables, nothing changed here. Everything that has been added is inside this scrap function that is yeah this long so i will explain so it takes as a parameter all the side generators so what we want to do is the uh we, we are going to fetch for example one uh side gener we are going to fetch uh all of them we are going to have a, an elements array and if we already have the first one we are going to skip the iteration so this is why i'm i'm fetching all the side generators first i want to do okay i'm fetching the name uh do we already have this one in database yes okay we skip so, okay. So the, U, the URL uh, will be like this one. So we just tell uh, then Puppeteer to execute a browser and to go to uh, to create a new page and then to go to this URL. So nothing really uh, uh, complicated here. We just create a Puppeteer instance to go to this URL. If there is a problem, uh, I just console log the error in the terminal and then I push to the errors uh, array uh, uh, an error. So. It's a page navigation error. I just put the URL so we will be able to see which URL uh, has been uh, 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 is wrong. Here it doesn't make sense because I'm just on the on one URL. But if you have many scrapers and you need to go into each URL, uh, you can uh, of course have that. This is really useful. The date and we stop the program. Then uh, we have the expression. So if you are not familiar with XPass, this is uh, the best thing to use when doing web scrapping, in my opinion. Um, oh, unfortunately, I don't have the uh, the extension on the private navigator. Uh, ah, sorry for that. Uh, but basically, the um, the XPath. So this is an expression. Uh, I forgot that. Uh, this is an expression uh, telling that in all the documents, in all the HTML document, I want a div that has a class generator card flex uh, all this uh, class. So if you inspect, uh, sorry for that. I, I thought that had, I had the, the extension, but I will not be able to show you the, the, the XPath extension. Um, yeah, what I can do is just copy past this into the inspector. Okay. So I will not be able to show you the extension, sorry for that. But um, if I fetch all these classes, we can see that it corresponds to um, a card. So a side generator card. So if I press enter, you will see all the card. So basically here I'm saying, okay, I want to fetch all these cards and it will be stored inside the element um, uh, object. So I'm, I'm, I'm fetching it to XPath. I'm just waiting for this um, 
uh, this card to be loaded. So here I'm just creating a wait for X pass. So I'm waiting three seconds for the cards to uh, appear on the website. If it doesn't, here it's uh, it's appearing uh, in less than three seconds. So no problem on that. And then what I do is for each element, so for each cards, I just load uh, Cheerio. So I, I, I say to Cheerio, okay, load this uh, HTML and uh, it will allow me to basically fetch the text, the information I want using Cheerio uh, for each of these cards. So the first thing we are going, uh, we are able to fetch is the name. So the name uh, is, uh, has, sorry, the dot text. Uh, we can see if we inspect, yeah. It has a dot text uh, dash Excel uh, class. It is not the entire class, but it's um, uh, it's enough to, to fetch it. And we fetch the text and we trim it. And if we don't find it, we just set it to nil. Okay, so here uh, we are able to fetch the name of every element. And as you can see, there is a condition. If you remember, all uh, the all SG array is array containing all the uh, the names of the site generators that are already in this uh, the database. If uh, the name we're going to fetch is already in the, the array, then we stop the program. But not, not the program, sorry, we, we, we skip the iteration. So we do a return, and it will just go to the next element. So if we have next and you go already in database, it will just skip, skip, and then get Gatsby, gets Jekyll. And then we do the same for the stars. So we fetch the stars. So here it is a Spain that contains uh, the, the word uh, stars. Uh, we take, so it's a little bit complicated. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, scrapping, uh, it will not uh, afraid uh, you. But I take the parent, uh, the text of this parent, and I replace um, the stars by nothing to only get the numbers because uh, I think that it's a span that contains, if we see, yeah, it contains all the text. So I'm fetching this text and this one, and I just remove the stars so I only get the numbers. All right, and I'm doing the same for Fox issues, the description and the language. This is pretty same logic uh, to that. And the deploy link to only get the, 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 the link, I get the A, the A elements that contains deploy, and then I get the attributes, so the href. Uh, so if you inspect that, you will only get this link. Okay, perfect. And now this this is a function that uh, we didn't create it yet. So this is create site generators. So basically send all the informations we get and we just create the site generator. After that, we increment this variable uh, for the report to know how much new uh, site generators we get. And at the end of this function, when the scrapper is done, uh, we just close uh, the page and, and the browser uh, with Puppeteer. So I, I'm just going to check if you have any question because uh, uh, yeah, I can activate in uh, incognito. Yes, but um, uh, it's fine. Uh, I, uh, I could have explained it uh, well without the extension, so it's good. Um, yes, I think we can uh, copy the, the XPass you did make tools. I'm not familiar with that. I'm, I'm always using the extension. So, <laughs> but um, okay. Thanks for the link, uh, uh, Fatty. I will check this out. Okay, we have no uh, question. Uh, what is the name? Good question. So it is XPass Helper, if I'm not wrong. Um, I'm just checking it on my other browser. Okay. It's a very cool extension, XPass Helper. This is really, 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 really useful if you want to do web scrapping. So this is this one. So basically, yeah, you just write, um, yeah, uh, no, I can show you. No. Uh, so yeah, you just pass the XPass expression inside this little black thing, and it will highlight uh, what it's correspond to. So this is really a, a game changer when you do web scrapping. You can find uh, easily find elements uh, quickly using this extension. And we have another question. So XPass helper. Um, is there out of the box support for TypeScript, or should we do configs outside? I'm not really sure what you you mean by uh, type uh, support for TypeScript. Do you mean it's Strapi? Uh, if yes, no, uh, it's not in in TypeScript. Sorry, there is no support for TypeScript. Um, okay, I will I will I will check uh, this question uh, just after. Um, okay, so let's keep going. Um, where was okay i was on this so i can save this file and then we need to create of course the last file so this is the query.js this is only a file that will allow us to query.js make some queries to strapping 
Uh, so this is this one. Wait for it. It is coming. All right. So I'm recording chalk uh, again, and I'm just creating a function so I can remove this one. Uh, create side generators that takes all the params that we scrapped, and we drew a strap query. So a create one to create a data. Uh, we uh, fill all the fields, uh, and we just uh, indicate which scrapper it belongs to. So you remember I created a, a relation between the scrapper and the side generators. Here I'm just you need just to pass the ID of the scrapper, and it will um, uh, link it to it. And then we have an update scrapper uh, function that will just update the scrapper at the end of the execution, implementing the report and the errors. Okay, and it will say uh, job done uh, at the end. Okay, perfect. Um, so everything should be ready if I'm correct. Um, I'm just checking at the end. Yeah, I just need to uncomment all of that. All of that. Just this one. Yep. Uh, like this and it should be ready okay so if we save our, our file sorry and we have an error because yeah it's because of the query file it's okay now we created it so it should work and we will of course have the error because uh the scrapper is not enabled so we are going back to strapi um, we can enable our scrapper. And just for testing here, we're not going to wait five minutes or what. We're going to uh, tell the frequency at every minute. So what will happen here is at the, X min at the end minute, I hope you see my time here, uh, at the next minute, so at 49, uh, uh, a scrapper will go uh, and check if the scrapper is um, uh, ready to be run. And it will, of course, create, the for the first time, the next execution at. So the next minute after this one, so at at uh, 50, uh, then the, the scrapper will be executed. So we just need to wait here, um, just 49, uh, to see the next execution at field. All right, it's ready. So if we refresh, it didn't work, uh, of course, uh, because I forgot <laughs> forgot a big step, <laughs> not a. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, the, the the file is still in Bootstrap, so there is still this logic of uh, you know executing the, the Chrome uh, the the file uh, inside when you reload the the server. So of course it doesn't make any sense. Uh, we need just to place the same code, but in the Chrome JS file. So here, so in Strapi you can create some. You have some Chrome, so you have a, a Chrome.js file that is created by default. Uh, so here I'm doing just the same thing. I'm requiring the this file, and I'm just saying, okay, at every minute, I want to check, I want to execute, sorry, the main function of Jamstack. So I already saved it, and uh, sorry for that, but we should wait again. The next minute should be now. In the coming seconds. All right, good. So the next execution ads should be filled. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, OK, what's going on? Um, this is weird. Maybe I didn't, uh, maybe I forgot something in the file. It should, it should be correct. Um, yeah, this is happening in life, <laughs> of course. It would have been too, too easy. Um, of course, OK. Um, <laughs> Jim Stack, OK. Everything should be ready. I don't really understand what's going on. Maybe I, uh, jamstack.org, that's the same slug. Uh, it is enabled. The frequency is really as well done. I can run the surprise and I will. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, maybe I forgot something and you mentioned it in the chat. <laughs> I will just see. Uh, nope. This was happy. Yes, I forgot to publish. Uh, I forgot to publish, but I'm not sure this is uh, going to fix the problem. Um, trying to see what I what I forgot. Uh, so the Chrome, it's perfect. Every minute you run the job stack main, uh, the bootstrap. We don't really need it for now. 
Um, everything should be fine. Okay, that is a big problem. <laughs> uh, I'm missing something. I'm missing something. Um, yes, of course. Uh, I think I need to rerun the the server. Hey right, guys, uh, I did uh, I did um, the application just before the live, and uh, it was working perfectly. Of course, it is not <laughs> during the live. Uh, it would have been too easy, of course. Um, private navigation? No, I'm not sure it's due to private navigation. Um, I'm really not sure what I'm missing here. Um, I hope you guys are not disappointed, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. We don't need the Chrome extension. And how can you check errors in this case? Uh, you can just basically like uh, console log uh, in your, uh, or at least push your errors inside errors uh, array. But uh, it seems like we're going to check, okay, if the Chrome is well executed. So just a console log executed. I think that's not a problem, but um, maybe there's a condition that is preventing the, the scrapper to run. Uh, it should. Mm -hmm. That is uh, very, that is very weird, to be honest. <laughs> stacker flow. No, I will not need the stacker flow for that. This is just uh, maybe this is something like uh, if there's a mistake, this is something I, I mistyped on um, on in the code or oh yes, of course. Oh my god. Okay, I got it. <laughs> it's because I forgot a step. Uh, sorry, it's it's the life pressure. All these people watching me, <laughs> I forgot a step, uh, everyone. Uh, so if you want to enable your scrapper, uh, your Chrome, sorry, you have to tell uh, Strapi to enable it, and I did it. So um, uh, this is a good way. Like uh, you, you asked um, how you can uh, check for errors. Well, a console log uh, is enough sometimes because you saw that I, I did a console log and it didn't appear. So the Chrome hasn't been executed. Hopefully, we need to tell uh, inside the server.js file. <laughs> sorry, yeah, sorry, everyone. Uh, in the server.js file that we enable the Chrome. <laughs> we should be good now. OK, so now we just need for the next minute to come. Uh, hopefully, I didn't forget uh, anything else. <laughs> sorry for this uh, little uh, uh, little time of, uh, of nothing happening. Uh, OK, so hopefully, finger cross, executed, perfect. So now it did, it didn't execute the scrapper. It just set it the next execution ads. So it should be filled. Perfect. So if we go to timestamp and we check which time it is, it is 56, which means in one minute. So it's you always you always have one minute um, after the execution because the cron itself. Uh, here will be executed every minute. So every minute it will check. But however, if you have a frequency of here, it is one every minute. So it will be executed at the next minute and then the next minute and then the next minute. But if you have here the expression of every five minutes, then it will be executed here, uh, not at 56, but in five minutes and in five minutes, et cetera, et cetera. So the next time it will just enter in this uh, condition utils here. And uh, it will say, okay, the actual time is uh, passed, is before the next execution at, we can uh, launch the scrapper. So you can see it has been uh, executed. So we can see that there is no, this is some information. So no uh, side generators in database. And the job done, uh, the job is done for jamstack.org. So the cron will be uh, executing every every minute. We can uh, change that later, but it, does, it doesn't, uh, we, don't, we don't need that. So if we go inside generators, that's it. Uh, we can see all the side generators that uh, have been scrapped. So uh, 322, that's perfect because there are 322 generators. And we have all, you, you have all the informations inside these, um, these side generators. So the name, description, the number of stars, and you also have the deploy to Netlify. So if you want to deploy this side generator to Netlify, you can just have um, 
uh, the link here. So uh, if we go back to Scrapper, um, we can see that um, all the site generators can appear here. And we have uh, the report, but I think the report needs to be, um, we need to reload to see the reports. Okay, so the reports say that we, we scrapped uh, 322 uh, new site generators. So what is the next step to that? Okay, you are automatically fetching information from a website. What you want to do is, for example, uh, you create your own front end and you, I don't know, replicates the website just for fun, uh, uh, just for fun. <laughs> uh, but uh, you will be able to fetch all this information you saved in Strapi for uh, your own uh, kind. So to do that, after the, you just need to go into the, uh, the administration uh, panel, sorry, uh, no, sorry, here, in the users and permission plugins, you go in public if you want your API, all your data you collected uh, to be public. And what you want to do, uh, sorry, I need to just zoom zoom out a little bit. Uh, I hope you still see, but it's not, um, yeah. So for the scrapper, uh, not the scrapper, the site generators, maybe you want to be able to find them through the API. So you just check this and you press save. And then you just need to, type site you can see like uh, you have the endpoints for that so you can just copy paste it so it is site generators and if you press enter you will have all the data, the data you scrapped uh, in JSON so you can have after that your front end fetching this information etc etc so this uh, this is the pos potential next steps you can have uh, for doing such a project um, I think that's it so I, I'm just going to answer the, the last question we have uh, we are only have emojis in the chat, so cool. <laughs> uh, okay, is it possible to download files? Absolutely, you can do that. Um, you can do that uh, using Puppeteer. So um, uh, here we are not doing that uh, because there is no files to download, but sorry, I'm not sure to, how to write Puppeteer. It's, it's a disaster every time I type it. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe uh, it, it, they, 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 they mentioned that in the, in the, the GitHub. Um, no, they didn't. They don't mention that, but you can do that. <laughs> I, I I did it yeah, for my uh, personal project. You can also take screenshots uh, using Puppeteer. So yes, you can absolutely do that. Uh, can you export all data? What do you mean? Uh, today we don't have any um, uh, plugins or something like that to export the data. For example, in CSV or something like that. Um, Unfortunately not. You can retrieve all the information using the API uh, through JSON, but no, no there is no um, yet uh, plugins to export the data using in CSV or something like that. And how do you let the script run in daemon mode automatically? I'm not sure to, to understand this question, to be honest. Um, sorry. Uh, so I, I will uh, answer your questions, Taki, in chat uh, for Dynamic Zone. Um, just after this uh, webinar and uh and yeah i think um i think that's it thanks yes. for for watching and following me uh yeah thank you maxime and yes uh live coding wouldn't be a real life coding without uh, <laughs> of course <laughs> a few surprises uh so i let you also maxime you talked about an article if you want to share it now i yes. will also share it the emails that people will re receive. Yeah, thanks for the reminder. So yeah, as I said, this is just a, um, a ret retranscription of the uh, article I just wrote, which is on the, our website. I just, uh, let me send it to in the chat. So if you want to dive deeper inside the article and I will be creating uh, um, a repository um, for this uh, project just after, and I will uh, add the link of the repository at the end of the article. Um, so yeah. Uh, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Good for me. Okay. It, was a, it was a real pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Maxime. If you have uh, any other questions about Malta or Malta Academies, I'm going to send you uh, the link uh, so that you can access the Malta Academy website, see other events that we do. Just wait for it. It's coming in a beautiful call to action. There you go. Uh, so thanks uh, everybody for being there, for answering, uh, for asking questions, sorry, and for trying to help uh, Maxim in this uh, <laughs> yes. thing. But, uh, honestly, all the live coding we do, it's always the same. <laughs> 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 the pressure of the, of the live, uh, live thing, I, I yeah. guess. 
Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. It was just a mistake, uh, something I forgot, and and it's <laughs> like it was an error or something like that uh, with the pressure of life. Yeah. But uh, that's uh, that's normal. Yeah. But it was uh, very clear, and uh, it seems like it was very clear to everybody. So thanks again, Maxim. I will uh, send you an email so that we can uh, follow up on that. And thanks uh, everybody for attending this Math Academy, and have a nice uh, Friday and a nice uh, weekend. Bye bye. Have a nice weekend. Take care.